Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. We are in a series about nephrology, so you'll also find this video in my nephrology playlist. In the previous videos, we talked about urine uric acid, urine osmolality, urine stones, urine casts, urine red blood cells, urine white blood cells, urine proteins, including the TAM horseful protein which is a damn good protein. We talked about urine catecholamines, urine ketone bodies, urine electrophoresis, microalbuminuria, microglobulinuria, and much more. And in the last handful of videos, we started talking about the topic of acute kidney failure or acute kidney disease or acute kidney injury, or you can simply call it acute azotemia. And we talked about the difference between BON and creatinine, the utility of the BON to creatinine ratio, and we talked about the fractional excretion of sodium. So please watch the videos in this playlist in order, especially the ones related to azotemia, like the last one on fractional excretion of sodium. Remember that when I eat proteins, they become amino acids. Before you know it, they become ammonia. The liver will convert ammonia into urea. Urea will go to the blood, will end up in the kidney. The kidney will excrete it. That's why if I have renal failure, what's going to happen? Anything before the kidney will go up, I have increased urea. Since urea is made of nitrogen, you can say that I have increased blood urea nitrogen. So urea will rise in the blood. How about urea in the urine? It will go down because the kidney is poor and cannot excrete anything. If you can measure the fraction of that urea in the urine, you will have the fractional excretion of urea. We talked about the causes of elevated blood urea nitrogen before, and they included kidney disease. It could be pre-renal azotemia, problem in the renal artery, or a problem in the heart, or a problem that I lost tons of blood, shock, septic shock, extracellular fluid volume depletion, especially GI bleed. We talked about all of this. Or the azotemia, or the kidney disease, could be caused by a renal issue, a disease in the kidney itself, such as acute tubular necrosis. Or the problem could be after the kidney, such as obstruction. We also compared between serum BUN and serum creatinine before. A good kidney is a kidney that excretes both. A bad kidney, i.e. renal failure, is a kidney that cannot excrete both. So both BUN and creatinine will rise in my blood if I have renal failure. However, don't forget that normally the kidney should reabsorb some of that urea back. It's called back diffusion. But if my kidney has failed, do you think my kidney can reabsorb back some of that urea? No, it's not going to happen. And we said in the last video that if the problem is before the kidney, the kidney is still healthy and a good kidney does not waste salt in the urine. The fractional excretion of sodium in the urine is low. But when my kidney is toast, intrarenal azotemia, what's going to happen to the fractional excretion of sodium? It increases. And we said that there is a problem with the fractional excretion of sodium. And this is the case of my patient who has prerenal azotemia, who I expect to have a low FENA, but is also taking a diuretic, which is a drug that excretes sodium into the urine, which artificially raises the FENA giving me the false illusion that my patient is intrarenal, when in fact the patient is pre-renal. How can we overcome this difficulty with the FNA? You do it by ordering fractional excretion of urea. What's that? Basically ask yourself, out of the urea that was filtered into your kidney, how much got excreted? What was the fraction of the urea excreted? This is the fractional excretion of urea. The fractional excretion of urea has two equations, just like the fractional excretion of sodium. For the fractional excretion of sodium, remember we start with the sodium excreted. So you put the sodium in the urine up here, and you put the sodium in the serum down here, the opposite. And then you multiply by something that's reciprocal. Here is urine sodium, so I'll put serum creatinine. And here is serum sodium, so I'll put urine creatinine. You multiply by 100, you get your FENA. Or there is a simpler way to do it. The functional excretion of sodium, remember we're talking about excretion. So tell me about the clearance, i.e. the washing out, the clearing of my blood, of sodium over the kidney's GFR. And when you talk about the fractional excretion of urea, 
just put urea instead of sodium here. So it's the clearance of urea over the GFR. Out of the GFR that I gave you, out of all the urea that I gave you, dear kidney, how much did you excrete? What was the fraction of that excretion? As a percentage of what I gave you in the first place. Look at that. Here is my patient who has pre-renal azotemia, but he's taking diuretics. That's why his FENA is high. So how can I tell and confirm that this patient's azotemia is pre-renal and not intrarenal? We order the FE urea, fractional excretion of urea. Remember that a good kidney should reabsorb some of that urea back by back diffusion. So if the kidney is reabsorbing it back, it means that there is less urea left in the urine, which means it's a good kidney. But if the kidney is toast as an intrarenal azotemia, this toast kidney cannot reabsorb back that urea. So the fractional excretion of urea is greater than 35%, usually way higher than this. And this is how you tell the difference between pre-renal and renal, but you should only use that test in this specific situation. Nothing more, nothing less. If you want to learn more about normal kidney function, download my renal physiology course. It will teach you about titratable acidity, the loop of Henle, the proximal tubule, the distal tubule, and much more. To learn about HELP syndrome, preeclampsia and eclampsia and how they destroy the kidney, download my OBGYN high yields course. Remember that acute kidney injury and chronic renal failure both will lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis, whereas renal tubular acidosis will lead to a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. You can learn about the difference by downloading my acid-base imbalance course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. If you do not wish to download. Instead, you would like to watch all of my 300 plus premium videos, then join the highest tier on my tribe by clicking on the join button next to the subscribe below the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.